Hi, welcome to Time Valley Motorhomes. I'm Callum and this is a handover video of an Eldest Accordo 120. So to operate the toilet, using the Trimark key, you can unlock your cassette door and then you need to push both in to release the door. And then to get the cassette out, you can lift the orange handle up, slide the cassette out of the vehicle. You can either carry it or you can wheel the cassette if it is too heavy. You would take this to your disposal point, which is normally beside your toilet block and showering block on site. Remove the grey cap, pop that to one side. Pour the contents out. Once you started pouring, press the orange button. This allows a bit of air in, gives it a consistent flow, stops it glugging. So press and hold that. Tip the contents of the cassette out. Once you've done that, there's normally a tap. So you put some water in, give it a rinse and tip out again. And then you go in with a cap full of chemical, which is 120 mil, into here, green or blue, depending on what the sites prefer you to use, and then you can put it back into the van and you can use your toilet again. Just here you've got a grey tap, this is your wastewater disposal tap. So this vehicle has a holding tank on board of about 70 litres of wastewater. However, you don't want to be driving around once you've left your site with a full tank of wastewater because that's approximately another 70 kilograms that takes up of your payload. So drive over the site. Some sites you've got to grade. Some sites you've just got to get as close to the hedge or the verge and you just want to open it up and allow your water out. Make sure that this is fully drained off in the winter and the tap's left open to avoid any water from freezing in the tank and causing any damage through frost damage. LPG, so liquid petroleum gas, this is your gas locker. So this is where your bottles would be stored. What you need to do is you need to get yourself some gas bottles because I've put my gas bottle on here to show you how your gas appliances work on board. The motorhome always runs off propane, never butane. Butane has a low, a high, a low freezing point, so that will freeze um, in the winter, whereas but, um, propane will work all year round whereas butane doesn't so to connect the bottle you've got a pipe here which is known as a pigtail on this particular vehicle it's got a hand tightened pigtail so no need for a gas spanner at all left to tighten right to loosen opposite ways with it being gas hand tighten turn the bottle on just a couple of turns of the top of the cylinder making sure that the cylinder is turned off before you do start traveling and making sure that it's dropped in once one bottle's empty and you do have a reserve, all you need to do is disconnect the pigtail and connect it to the back bottle and rejig your bottle so that you can get your empty bottle off and you can go and exchange that for another full canister. This is your fresh water intake, so carry yourself a hose pipe with some hose pipe fittings. As on this site, it's mainly just a brass tap. So you'll need to screw one end, the hose lock end, and then the flat end in, the flat end into the water so put your key in push it in flat end the hose into the van fill it until it overflows or you look on board your control panel and you can see how much water is on board if you want to then get rid of the water there's a blue tap underneath and you'd open it and you drain that off. Drain it off in the winter to avoid frost damage or drain it off if you're not using it or if you've taken on a source of contaminated water. These are the flues for your exhaust for your heating and hot water system so don't worry if they start weeping or you can see a bit of fumes coming out of them that are doing their job. Coming around to the back of the vehicle you've got your high level brake light and reversing camera and on this one you do have a Fiamma bike rack so pull the reel down these are just depending on if you're putting children's bikes on here or you're putting adults bikes on here you can adjust them depending on the length of the bike frame pop your wheel in pop these through the spokes and tie it down crossbars for the first bike and crossbars for the second bike and then use a bike lock around the bikes and the bike frame to avoid the bikes being stolen if you leave the vehicle unattended. <coughs> Coming round to the back of the passenger side now. So this is your gas, this is your electric locker should I say. 
Again, with the Trimark key, this will open. This is where the location of your leisure battery is. And on this vehicle, it is a new max, 105 amp hour leisure battery, with your main battery fuse being here. The fuse on the battery. You've also got your hookup points. So whether you're hooking it up over the winter at home, hooking it up to charge it at home, or you've arrived on your site and you want to hook it up. This is where you hook the vehicle to mains. So you get your mains cable, you pull the collar back, you slide it, the cable behind the back of the locker there, door so that you can shut it and put into the groove. You then connect it to the vehicle. Connect the vehicle first before you think about connecting the mains and making the live lead, making the lead live, should I say, on either the house or the site. You've got to connect the motorhome so that you're never walking around with a live lead. Do it in reverse when unhooping the vehicle. And then once you are on your site, you can now lock this locker and leave the wire safely on board with connections to mains 230 volt. Fiamma awning, which I'll show you in a second. Bridge vents, round key, wanders your water, wanders your application door. Diesel filler opens with the main fade boxer, Peugeot boxer key. And underneath you do have your AdBlue. So AdBlue on a boxer is 19 litres, the same as a Decato. It will illuminate on the dash between the temperature and fuel gauge, which looks like an exhaust light when it needs it. And this gives, when it illuminates, you've got a thousand miles before simply the engine will not start because there's no hard blue in it. When the light comes on, you can either pull into a petrol forecourt and buy it on the pumps. So just look for where the wagon diesel pump is. Normally beside it, there's a box which says add blue. Little blue filler, which goes into here and you can fill it until it overflows and you'll know when it's full. Or you can buy it in the drums, which is about, on the petrol forecourt, about 30 quid for 10 litres, and you can top it up. It's entirely up to you whether you want to. I would personally buy it on the pumps because it's about one pound a litre on the pumps. And this van only is going to take 19 litres from empty. And when that light comes on, you're probably only going to need a maximum refill of around 14 litres. Make sure you top it up, but it will do five and a half thousand miles on a full tank of Ad Blue. Here is your tyre pressure, so five bar on the front, which is 72.3 psi, and five and a half bar on the back, which is 79.5. Underneath the passenger seat, you will find your toolkit, which includes a jack and a brace and a torn iron. Underneath the floor on the boxer, you do have your engine battery in here. It's not underneath the bonnet, it's underneath the floor. So if you ever need to change that in years to come, you just lift this panel off and you can get the battery straight out and replenish it. And your bonnet release is on the side of the passenger dashboard. So underneath the bonnet, you do have your fluids, which are mainly all this side. So you've got your screen wash, three tabs, lift this part of the scuttle off and you do have your power steering fluid and your coolant brake fluid oil filler and the dipstick there for checking the levels paint code weight plate so 3.3 gross vehicle weight 5.3 train weight if you put a tow bar on the back of this motorhome you can tow a trailer or a vehicle or a caravan anything you want to tow up to the weight of two ton but you can't exceed that and then you do have the front and back axle weights if you ever need to jump start the vehicle because the battery's underneath the floor this is an earthen point here so you put your black crocodile clip or jump pack on there and then you've got your air filter put your key or a screwdriver or something flat just in here and lift this up And this is your positive for giving or receiving a jump start. So to operate your 12 volt control panel, you've got your master switch here at the bottom, which turns the vehicle on and off. So that's all power from your leisure battery via your 12 volt system. If you are hooked up, then you will get access to 240 volt via all the three pin sockets around the vehicle. But if you're not hooked up, you'll only have 12 volt. You've got your awning light here, 
the tank heaters, which turns on the probes in the tanks to stop the water from freezing when we are in colder temperatures when using the vehicle. When you're not using the vehicle, it's always recommended to drain the tanks down. Lights, so this is just your master switch for your light on board the vehicle. And then they all are individually switched, but you've got to have the master switch on to send power to the individual switch. Your pump, to use the taps, toilet and shower, making sure that you've got enough water on board first. Turn your pump on and what that'll do is, it'll pressurize the water through your taps, toilet and shower. So you need that on, otherwise you'll get nothing through the pipe work. At the moment, you can see your voltage of your leisure battery. Take the hook about to get a true reading of the leisure battery volt at the top. Press the button and you can see the level of your fresh water on the bottom. So to work your heating and hot water, which is through a wheel system, this is your wheel control panel. So to operate, you've got your hot water at the top, heating at the bottom. Plus and the minus is just the room temperature of the heating goes up this rate scale all the way to 30 degrees So we'll start off with the water So should you have water on the boiler's closed you can start to heat your water when you arrive Either on your site or if you're wild camping. So you press the button here and it'll go from off To a snowflake which is frost start which just keeps the water in the boiler above freezing at 5 degrees You've got one wavy line which indicates 750 watts of electric. So this is the lower output on electric. Should you be on a smaller CL site or abroad where they don't give you as much electric as you get in the UK through hookup. Then you've got two wavy lines which is two kilowatts of electric which you can use on most sites throughout the UK. You've got gas. So this is gas on its own which you'd use if you're wild camping as you wouldn't have any other source to heat your water off than gas. You've got gas plus 750 watts of electric and gas plus 1850 watts of electric. So this is mixed too so if you are in desperate need of water put both sources on together it will reduce the time it takes to heat the water to around anywhere between five and seven minutes for a full 10 liters. And underneath you do have your heating. So this is how to heat the motor home. So 750 watts of electric, 1850 watts of electric, three kilowatts of electric. So you've got three kilowatts on the heating, which you don't have on the water. So if the site can take you using all this electric, you can use three kilowatts, but sometimes some sites won't allow you to use this as it'll either trip the van or trip the site post. So you may have to just use two. Gas on its own if you're wild camping. And then gas and 1850 watts of electric together. So this will reduce the time it takes to heat the motor home to around 10 minutes to get it up to temperature to take the chill off it. And in the winter, you would use that if you're away in the cold, take the chill off the van and then take the, turn the gas off and just put it back on to two kilowatts of electric to continue and maintain the temperature inside the vehicle. Plus and the minus, like I said, on here, you can scroll right down and you can go to the moon. So you see the little moon here. That's nighttime mode, that's 15 degrees. And the snowflake is above five degrees to keep the temperature and the chill off the van inside. If you ever get a red exclamation mark down the side, whatever's failed, say if it was the hot water, the, the heating, sorry. So you press the heating and the plus button together, press and hold, and it'll eliminate that mark there. And if it was the water, the water and the plus button together, and, and it will eliminate the exclamation mark down the side to reset the control panel. But always turn your heat, turn them off. Allow the fans to go silent in the background before you turn the master switch off on your control panel. Otherwise, you can unsync the boiler sequence of turn the system off, and you will get that red exclamation mark. So I've showed you how to reset it, but turn it off. Allow it to go silent inside the van until you either start the engine, turn your mains power button off, or unhook the vehicle. 
So before you cook any facilities in the kitchen, you've got three gas burners. So using the ignition on the front, making sure your gas is on, you'll be able to light your gas hobs. Underneath, you do have a grill. So just keep a hold of the gas control valve on the front of the oven until it gets warm and then when you let go it will stay lit because if you come off it what will happen is it will go out you've got your oven underneath and you can go back for your grill Wait for the thermocouple to get warm and release and it'll stay lit. If you ever need any parts, your part number is here on your oven. This is your part number sticker and on here as well. You've got a microwave which is 800 watt mains power. So you've got to be hooked up for this to work. And to turn it on, you just press light the sticker, say it's press eco to wake and it'll come on. If you ever want to unplug it, the socket for the microwave is in here along with your cup and plate racks for storage ensure everything's cool on here before you put the glass lid down otherwise you can shut them the glass lid and then located just underneath is where your pump and boiler is so your pump is here your boiler drains this yellow one so when it's facing towards the passenger side of the vehicle it is shut and your boiler is holding 10 litres of water at any one time however in the winter you want to ensure that all water is drained off the vehicle so starting off from the outside you do the fresh in the waste leave the taps open you come in to the vehicle open all the taps within the van remove the shower head from the shower hose and lie the shower hose in the shower tray and then you want to open the boiler so you want to just get a hold of it and you want to point it to the front of the cab and it will drain off the water directly out underneath the van leave it open during this time that you've got the vehicle stored over the winter once you've opened that turn the control panel on and turn the pump on and blast the pump out for 10 seconds you want all the water to get out of here once you've done that turn it off remove this cap because you can see there there's water sitting in there you don't want that to freeze because that will crack and then when you come to reuse it you'll not be able to use it until you get a new cover so take the filter cover off get a tea towel just to mop up any loose water and then when you come to reuse it obviously put your cover back on shut your boiler back into this position shut all your taps assemble your shower head onto your shower hose shut the taps outside the van fill it with water Control panel on, pump on, cold side of the tap first, you'll get a pressurised flow of water, hot side, it'll cough, splutter, make all sorts of noises because it's transferring the water from the fresh water tank underneath the van into the boiler of 10 litres. So it's just going to push loads of air out until it stops coughing and you get a free flow of water, then your system's primed. That's your boiler, that's your pump, these are your gas taps. Any problems with gas, turn them in until they're off to be safe. These are mainly for when the vehicle is annually serviced. But if you did want to and you knew what gas appliances was causing a problem, you can turn it off to save you having to uh, cancel your holiday and come home. These are open to close. That's closed. But these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually habitation serviced. So to operate your Dometic fridge, which is a three-way fridge, you've got your three-way source selector here. So depending on what source you want to be on, so you've got off at the top, First one is mains 240 volts, so it'll act as a household fridge, so if you are pre-chilling it at home or you are on a site, you'd be using mains electric to operate your fridge because you wouldn't want to waste your gas. However, if you've been to a site and you're ready to go to your next site or you've pre-chilled it at home first and you're travelling with food in your fridge, turn it to battery. Battery's not your leisure battery, it's a feed from when your engine has started. It gives a 12 volt feed to your fridge and what that does is it keeps the shopping at the same temperature so it keeps the fridge at the same temperature which will then keep the shopping nice and fresh until you arrive back on site and you go back up to 240 volt or if you're wild camping you go down to gas 
This is your temperature, so you can adjust the temperature to suit, but you need to push it in when on gas and push the spark ignition in. This orange band starts to go in the green. Once it's in the green, you let go and it's lit on gas. So now it's in there, let go, and that is it lit on gas. So if you're wild camping or you are pre-chilling it in a storage yard and you didn't have access to mains hook up, you would use your gas. With your fridge, what we do recommend is you clean it out once in a while and when you are not using the van, you leave the fridge door open because it's got an airtight seal on, so it traps the air, which will then become smelly over time. So on the light here, you can push this button in and pull the pins out. And what that'll do is it'll stop the door from shutting and you can get air circulation in and out of the fridge. To operate your Fedford toilet, put the pump on and before you use the toilet, you want to just press the blue button and put some water in the bowl. Once you put water in the bowl, before you go any further, you want to get rid of that water because that water just helps lubricate the seal between the blade and the top of the cassette. So you want to get the screw lever and slide it to the right. This has now opened the trap door. You can see directly out down into the cassette. You'll use the toilet. Once you've finished, you'll give it another good flush. If you've bought any pink, just put it in a spray bottle and dilute it with water because it doesn't go into the water system on this motorhome. It's fresh water supplied for the toilet. So you could spray it, flush it, and then close it. And then when the cassette indicates with three green lights underneath here, the little diagram of the cassette, it indicates that it's full. So three green lights to a red indicates that it's full and that indicates that it is needing to be emptied, replenished with chemical, once it's been emptied, rinsed, and topped back up to go back into the van. So in the wardrobe area, you've got your TV aerial and you've got your TV booster. This is your booster here. So it's got a little wheel on there, which means you can amplify the signal or bring it down if it's too strong or too weak. And then what you can do is if you're still not getting a good signal, you're gonna loosen the nut off and push the aerial up. So this is on a pole, so it lifts the aerial up by pushing, you can turn the black collar, which directs the aerial on the roof, tilts it side to side, front to back. But always make sure that before you start driving off, it's pulled in and it's tightened up so that the wind doesn't snap the aerial off the roof when traveling. And on this particular vehicle, it's got a solar panel on. So it's solar panel, which is wired to both batteries, leisure and vehicle by the looks of it, because it's got two terminals in. It's flashing, which means it's fully charged. And on the meter, you can see the voltage, the volts, and the amperage of the batteries on there. But please note, when the vehicle is hooked up, the solar panel doesn't work, because mains 230 volt is a lot more than a 12 volt panel could ever supply. So that is always prioritized over the solar panel. Solar panel will work once a vehicle is not hooked up and standing, either when you're wild camping or you're just parked up in your storage yard or on your driveway. Underneath the flap, you've got this little cupboard. And in here, you've got your RCD unit. So you've got all your main circuit breakers and your RCD. Best way to check if the vehicle's hooked up is, check, is trip the vehicle. If it trips, you're hooked up. If it doesn't trip, you're not receiving power. So check where you're getting your power from. And underneath, you've got all your 12 volt fuses, which are listed. So it would be a good idea to carry a assortment pack of standard blade fuses, which you can get on likes of eBay, Amazon. Carry them in, in the motorhome just in case a fuse does blow. And it's as simple as pulling it out. Checking the center of the fuse there. You can see that's intact. That would be blown if it wasn't. If the fuse was gone, it would be blown. Getting the same fuse and popping it back in. Because if a 12 volt appliance isn't working, it's not it's gonna be a fuse. So that's the first place I would check if a 12 volt appliance isn't working, has the fuse blown. So in the back of the motorhome you have your bed and your sofa so your sofa is converted into a bed so what you can do is you can either use them as singles if you are short enough by taking the backrests off and use it as two single beds or if you want to make the double bed just underneath the storage drawers at the back if you just slide these out and slide them all the way until they stop on these two stoppers now what you need to do is you need to lift 
it over and pop the board on the other side of the stopper so it's now locked in it's not going to move beneath you and then you would just use your backrests into the center here to fill the void and that will create your double bed but it's best that you put all your cushions on the backs including the base cushions because you'll get a flatter surface to sleep on and it'll be a lot more comfortable than sleeping on the bull nose and the ribs of the cushions